Well, welcome to what I'm hoping is going to be a short episode. I'm going to get right into the weeds on installing the fuel fittings, which I mentioned in the last uh, episode, and I've changed tack completely, so that's why I thought I'd get right back to uh, responding to one of the questions about the fitting. I said I was going to install. Short version didn't work. I think since the last episode, the guy in the brown truck uh, showed up with carbon fiber, and just as of today, I got all the nylon hardware, which I'll explain. Uh, as mentioned, I got my fuel fuel hose and six fasteners, and I got used the fittings I mentioned, and the reason I'm not going to disclose the part number, I mean, I can put it in if you really want it, but they don't work for this application. They're still going to work in the airplane. There's places where I need to go from quarter NPT, 90 degree elbow into the uh, AN6, for example, the uh, fuel selector and the header tank, and possibly the engine compartment, who knows. I also got a box, uh, just realized I didn't open this until just a minute ago, but this is uh, it's a complete setup from Aircraft Spruce for pitot static AOA, all the fittings, uh, and I get a static port, which I did not have. Part of my reasoning was they didn't just have raw quarter inch OD tube, but they did have the setup and I thought I'm for sure gonna need some of these fittings and it's best not to be stalled out when I could be moving forward. So with that, let's get to it. I've been pacing back and forth for a few days waiting for the UPS man to show up with these fittings that I opened my big mouth about. Uh, so I got all my AN6 hardware, fuel line, and some fittings. To back up a little bit, this is the area where the fuel fitting I'm trying to convert to away from the barbed fittings and hose clamp and be able to get in the finger strainer and then the banjo bolt, which I showed before, and I decided it didn't work. Well, so if you recall my situation trying to get my finger strainer with the elbow, banjo fitting, whatever is going to arrive at, this is the one that's supplied in the kit. It's just a simple barbed fitting. You put on the 5 16 hose. It's either 5 16 or 3 8 don't remember. And then you put on a hose clamp. And I wanted to convert it to straight up AN6 tube the whole way. Yes, you'll notice I have a coarse strainer and the fine strainer. My kit came with uh, both sets. Um, I have two of each, obviously. I shopped this on the forum and I was told that the coarse one would be preferable because what you want to do is start out with catching the big stuff. So I call this a gravel catcher. And then use finer and finer filters as you get closer to the engine. Makes total sense, so these are not going to go in my plane. Anyway, so for comparison, this is the stock one. You can see how much bigger this banjo fitting was. Well, I have scoured the internet to find any banjo fitting, which is more compact, because I know there's a million of them, that go from quarter-inch NPT into the AN6, or even something I could convert to AN6. And believe it or not, this one that I got on eBay, thanks to somebody on the forum, is the only one I could find. As I alluded to previously in episode 16, I believe, uh, that these are too big to fit in there without some uh, carving some wood. So what I did is I found these were part of my JEGS order. And based on the description in the picture, I thought for sure this was going to be smaller. It's uh, not. And to be fair, I don't know if these were tapped to the same depth. Who knows, uh, I could figure that out later, but you can see right away the problem is, now all of a sudden the banjo fitting I have looks pretty compact compared to this. This is almost big enough that I would have to run the fuel line on the outside of the wing, uh, rib number one. And I don't plan on doing that. So these not inexpensive fittings turn out to be not the ideal solution. So, as I just mentioned, scoured the internet, could not find anything that was better than this one here. And so I decided to revisit putting those in the plane. And by the way, these aren't useless. I have other places where there's three eighths and excuse me, quarter NPT uh, in the fuel system, and those will work just fine for that. And that's actually what I thought I was going to end up doing with these. So looking at my left wing first, you can see where I cut the relief for the manual, and I also relieved this, thinking it was going to allow me to get in a screwdriver, wrench, socket, whatever, to get on whatever fitting I used here. And what was pretty obvious to me was that this notch is big enough to get in the uh, Allen wrench and get it into that uh, blue banjo fitting, but this part of the cap strip was in the way. I was really trying to avoid cutting on the cap strip, but now I don't see that it's avoidable. And so why is it that I'm eager to get rid of this solid 90 degree elbow? It actually has two reasons. One of them is that when this finger strainer is tightened all the way in,
when it gets perfectly snug this has to be pointed straight back or preferably slightly downhill and so how would you get there i would have to keep tapping this tapered hole that's in the fiberglass tank and hope that i get to that perfect orientation so some kind of a swivel fitting here is hugely preferred and the other reason is pretty obvious to see if i wanted to remove this barb fitting which we're supposed to do for a annual condition inspection now the fabric on the bottom of the wing is in the way and i have seen some people put access covers i'm trying to avoid that and so that leads me back to that banjo fitting so instead of this thing spinning around and around and needing a cutout in the bottom to access this the banjo fitting if it worked right allows me to thread it right in here I can orient the hose at the perfect angle and have everything nice and snug with the sealant in it and not worry about it anymore. The trick is, how can you get it uh, in and out after the plane is built? I think this is super important to be able to get this finger strainer out for servicing the plane. And so far with the notch I have right here, I can get the finger strainer out, but then the uh, elbow is a different problem. So as I mentioned, this notch, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, because I can't, uh, where I cut previously, is enough to get access to the banjo fitting, but could I get the banjo fitting in and out? And the problem is that the fat round part of it was hitting the cap strip. I really wanted to avoid cutting the cap strip because you've already cut away some of the shear web and it would make the rib a little bit weaker. So I'm still concerned about that. I may double up on the other side with some aluminum or whatever, but basically you can see what the goal is here. So with a minimal relief on the cap strip and even kind of bevel the edge a little bit, I can get the finger strainer in and out, which is primary goal here. But it's no good if I can get the finger strainer out if I can't get the fitting out before that. It doesn't do me any good at all. So this worked a little while ago when I was playing with it. The idea, you have to, you have, to have enough relief that I can get the thread started without cross-threading anything. That would be bad. You get the idea. Then the big question is, can I get the hose on? Well, this is a hose end fitting. So this will go with my AN6 hose. It'll be permanently attached and this will be the swivel end here. So it will snake its way in here. Do I have room for it? It will be tight, but the answer is yes. I think in real life, this will have to be tightened on here and I can remove the whole thing. Then if I needed to, I could access it, pop the hose off. But in general, I think this is where I'm going to get to. Stake it up high somewhere where it's not falling out and then get out the finger strainer. Have to touch up, of course, all the wood I was just grinding on. But at this point, I'm back to using these uh, blue uh, quarter NPT to N6 and then these new hose fittings I got. So once I get the other wing done, and I think it was actually has a little bit more room because of the little bits of variation that happened in this airplane then I'm ready to bond in the tanks and make a huge leap forward number two rib trailing edge all that and what else uh, so back to my magnetometer platform where I have the uh, AN hardware Adele clamps and the cardboard mock-up I got this sheet of uh, one millimeter carbon fiber uh, just got this off eBay it's plenty stiff for this job I spent some time truing it up because it was actually pretty rough and getting it set on here I'm actually going to cut it off at about seven and a half inches and then I need to drill the holes and then I uh, have the nylon hardware that's on the way. So these are just going to allow me to continue mocking this up and getting the holes in. These are a lot easier to hold in place and drill holes than an actual Adele clamp. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to cut this seven and a half inches, get ready to drill the holes. Uh, number two ribs. So big surprise, I've got two complete sets of them. Uh, notice how twisted this one is right here. Because uh, all of these were twisted. Actually, three of the four were twisted really badly when I got them out of the box. And those are actually twisted in the same direction. One of these was fine. And the other one, was these was the worst one that I had. And so I just threw them in a bucket of water tub of water for a while on a nice warm day I left them in there for about 10, 10 minutes took them out and uh, flexed them around a little bit and restrained them and they actually were a perfect match set so you can see it's starting to wander a little bit this is still it's so flimsy that that part doesn't really matter so much so this has been about I don't know a week and a half two weeks since I did this like I said I 
played around with these other ones and I got them lined up and actually like I said the one that's over here was the worst one of all and so this is uh, these are completely rescuable so if this happens to you uh, it's not a tragedy you don't need to get new ones you can just soak them just room temperature water at that point they're pretty flexible there's my neighbor again got my eighth inch by half rivets got plenty of them can get this uh, part of the job complete I'll probably do that right now get on that other wing I still need to redo my pressure test on these tanks I know how to do it using the acetone using these uh, rubber plugs works fantastic I did say pressure test for about the 50th time it's a leak test super low pressure just to make sure that when you grind away this material you haven't uh, violated the seal between the upper and lower skins uh, on these tanks and uh, then I can go ahead and bond the tanks in start working the rest of it my white goo that's used as a thread sealant hung up in the Amazon truck somewhere halfway across the nation it was supposed to be here last Wednesday um, I can assuming I get this so the hardware can go in and out like I intend it to that stuff can follow and I'll be fine so now that I have the package from Aircraft Spruce, it's time to get serious about installing this uh, GAP26 Pedal Probe. I'm, I'm going to end up covering the bottom surface of this wing and attaching this per, uh, mast semi-permanently, but I have to trim these tubes. And so if anybody's got advice on how they pull this off, I've seen some people, probably a bad camera angle, I don't know if there's even a good one, uh, people where they bend this tube and run it out towards the wingtip. But I think if you get enough bends in it, you would not be able to drop it out the mass should it have to be replaced for any reason. So I'd actually like to cut it off down here fairly low, uh, make sure that there's no kinks possible, and then have some kind of a service loop out here so I could actually drop that pitot tube and replace it or at least service it uh, if it gets clogged up. So if any of you have installed one of these and have the correct answers, I'd appreciate some uh, comments down below. So that's all I have for this episode. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I guess I should be soliciting for people to like and subscribe. Don't know what difference it makes. I'm just doing this content filling gaps, for example. I really wish there had been a close-up video uh, showing those fuel fittings and how they get installed. There may be one. I just didn't see it. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.